depending on whether or not our primary responsibility is to read or to protocol, uh, we, will, uh, we will take on that responsibility right when we get to our desk around 8 a.m. So if your job is primarily to read studies, uh, you'll pick up a bunch of studies, generally inpatients and emergency room studies take priority over our outpatients. We'll review those independently and then call over an attending periodically to either review a batch of cases or if it's something complex like an MRI, you'll probably only get through one or two of those before an attending comes around. And depending on your skill level, some attendings will just basically tell you to send them studies if you feel comfortable um, as you progress through your training as well and call them over with questions. Around noon, we're dismissed for noon conference, uh, which is generally any myriad of radiology topics given by one of our attendings, or sometimes there's a grand rounds. Occasionally, we have peer learning where we learn from either other residents or, or we review cases that were, that were recently uh, either flagged as interesting or as complex um, or as a near miss or, or you know a good catch or something like that. And then around 1 p.m. we will uh, we'll get back to our desks usually. And then the afternoon is pretty similar to the morning. We continue to review cases. And, and then around 5 p.m. we're usually dismissed, allowing for call and uh, other later shifts. The caseload is, I think, more dependent on your level of training. So if you are a junior resident, you cannot get through cases with the speed and efficiency and accuracy of a more senior resident. But, but that can, uh, can also vary with the modality. So for instance, uh, with chest x-rays, you could probably get through you know, 100 to 200 a day if you're, if you're efficient. Whereas with you know, MSK, MRIs, you, you might only get through one or two in your whole day as a junior resident, maybe three or four as a senior resident. So at least at Jefferson, our uh, first three years of training are indistinguishable from a diagnostic radiology resident. So we report to the same attendings, our expectations are the same on every rotation, and we do just as much IR in those first three years as our DR colleagues do. It'll vary a little institution to institution, but most institutions, uh, one to two months of your first three years of diagnostic radiology training are interventional radiology. At some institutions, uh, IR residents will get a little bit more of that time uh, earlier in their training. But at Jefferson, our, our, uh, our first three years are indistinguishable from, the, from our diagnostic colleagues. Our responsibilities when we're on the IR rotation are a little different from our DR colleagues, uh, particularly when it comes to call. When you're a diagnostic radiology resident, you, uh, if you get a call overnight, you call the fellow who's also on call with you. So it's a buddy call system, and the fellow calls the attending uh, to staff the consult. Whereas uh, when the IR residents are on here, we take independent call um, directly with the attending. Um, so that helps build that sort of early on confidence, and uh, it makes you think a little harder before, before picking up that phone to call, which I really appreciate. Our institution is a level one trauma center and a major transplant center, so every day there are new pathologies that I'm seeing and that, that are being shared with, uh, with the residency from you know, different cases that attendings come across. Um, that, that fascinate me. Uh, the amount of anatomic variability in patients is something that I don't think I had a true appreciation for, even with all the surgical rotations and IR rotations I did as a medical student. So one of the things that we do here is, uh, is we do complex venous interventions um, for patients with uh, you know, post-thrombotic, completely occluded, superior vena cava, you can go in and actually recanalize um, and open up that channel. Yeah, so every day uh, we are interacting with specialists across the board, uh, both inpatient and outpatient specialists. You know, we're communicating findings to uh, in our reports, but then also uh, calling and protocoling studies with different clinical specialists of all sorts of levels. So there really is a breadth and also a depth of, uh, of knowledge that uh, you have to have as a radiologist. You have to be able to speak the lingo in, 
in any specialty that you interact with and understand what's clinically important to them. Um, so every day I'm humbled by, by how much uh, the attendings here know and you know how I, I just aspire to be as multidisciplinary and, and useful to other clinicians as, as they are um, with their diagnostic radiology skills. Uh, the other thing that's important to realize is we interact with people at, uh, at every level of society, including now our reports are immediately uh, visible by patients. So we have to be able to communicate in a way that is understandable to any level of training, including uh, you know, the complete layman, all the way through uh, you know, a, a subspecialist who, who wants a very particular clinical question answered. So uh, that can be very challenging and, and I think is often overlooked by, uh, by uh, other specialists and also uh, medical students as a skill that a good diagnostic radiologist has. There's a misconception that radiology is a slow, uh, you know, like we move at our own pace. Uh, it is very much fast-paced. Many times when you're covering uh, inpatient imaging, that the clinician needs the answer yesterday, or uh, they need the answer five minutes ago, and, and yet you still have to be very thorough with reviewing that. So you need to be efficient. You have to have a good search pattern for any sort of imaging that you're, that you're reviewing. And ultimately, you have, to, you have to know how to get a hold of someone when, uh, when you find a critical finding that could be life-threatening. So many people think uh, radiologists are a doctor's doctor. Uh, I like to think of myself as a patient's doctor. Um, and you know, even when I'm communicating with other physicians, I ultimately uh, am caring for a patient just like any other physician would. Um, particularly with more uh, interventional or procedural specialties in radiology, musculoskeletal, breast, um, fluoroscopy, and interventional radiology are all great examples, as well as neurointerventional radiology. In those procedural specialties uh, of radiology, you may have the patient referred to you by another physician, but ultimately you're caring for the patient. Um, and even when you're reviewing diagnostic imaging, you I, if you don't keep the patient in mind, um, you can lose sight of sort of what your job is all about. Um, so I think it's important both as a medical student and as a trainee to, to remember that ultimately everything we're doing is for the patient and um, to hopefully improve their quality of life, but also to catch, you know, uh, life-threatening disease and, and, and hopefully change the course of their care. So, um, so a radiologist's job is inherently important and I think that can sometimes also be lost on a medical student who's maybe just like watching over the shoulder of someone, uh, someone else who's taking on that sort of, that personal and also, you know, legal and medical liability of, of being, being correct and accurate. So depending on the institution, um, musculoskeletal radiology, uh, neurointerventional radiology, um, those sort of like, uh, they all float in, in, in interventional space whereby you do image guided interventions. And depending on the institution, the way that those are divided within the radiology department can differ. Here at Jefferson, our musculoskeletal radiologists um, are heavy proceduralists. Um, and uh, as are uh, some of our neuroradiologists. So as an IR resident, we get to rotate with those other um, subspecialties during those first three years primarily um, and learn from them those techniques. And then in our interventional years, uh, our primary focus is a little bit more centered around um, IR procedures and less so around um, musculoskeletal interventions in particular. And we have a musculoskeletal fellowship as well where their primary you know, training relies heavily on that. But we do see a lot of it throughout our diagnostic years. So uh, I think if, I think we'd still come out well trained for that sort of, uh, for those sorts of interventions. Creating a niche within interventional radiology for yourself comes much later. Um, generally after fellowship, uh, once you're out in the real world, you sort of decide what you want to focus on, you take a deep dive in it, maybe you study under someone or work with someone who's more senior and has experience in that particular subspecialty uh, within interventional radiology. Um, 
but that uh, just like in med school, you have to learn everything in order to be able to decide on a specialty. Um, the same applies with uh, radiology residency. The most important thing to remember is uh, the importance of the diagnostic radiology training to what you'll be doing day in and day out as an interventionalist. The primary value add that interventional radiologists contribute to a hospital or a healthcare system is our understanding of complex imaging. Anybody can learn how to do a procedure, but not everyone can understand the anatomy, the appearance of physiology on imaging. Um, and so really what it comes down to is if you're not a good diagnostic radiologist, you will never be a good interventionalist. So the primary goal of your first three years of training is to become the best diagnostic radiology resident that you can. Uh, I think one of the most important pieces of advice I can give you is uh, to study anatomy on a daily basis. You should be in an anatomy book or, or using an online resource of some sort and uh, testing your knowledge of anatomy fairly frequently. Uh, I think it's, it's one of the things that, again, sets uh, a good interventional radiologist apart from a mediocre one. Uh, is, a, is a really fundamental understanding of anatomic variance, particularly vascular anatomic variance, and, uh, and then in general just like a, a, a deep understanding of anatomy. Ultimately, everything is rele relevant to interventional radiology, and there are new procedures coming out every day, so your understanding of complex anatomy will set you apart. Um, the other piece of advice I think I'd give to uh, a medical student is to, uh, to, to, when you're on your diagnostic radiology rotations, I think it's very important to put yourself in the shoes of the physician that you're sitting next to um, and see if you can find what they do day in and day out interesting and exciting. Um, many interventional radiology jobs require you to still read some diagnostic radiology. Um, so the, uh, you have to like like that aspect of it as well. Um, and I guess I worry sometimes when uh, students come in and they, you know, they seem bored because the act of being a student and watching somebody else dictate can sometimes be a little bit mundane. But uh, instead of focusing on that aspect and sort of your experience as a student, really try to put yourself in the shoes of the, the resident or attending that you're sitting next to. And and see if you could find the sort of visual, temporal, spatial reasoning uh, and, and clinical reasoning that they're doing uh, to be something that you could see yourself doing. Uh, one other thing I'll say I think that's important for medical students to understand is that radiology residency is a lot like another four years of medical school. Um, and I don't mean that in a way to like, it, in a scary way, but but it's important to recognize that your primary job as a radiology resident is to come to work and learn. Um, and that can be different from other specialties where your primary job is uh, to care for patients and to uh, take on that responsibility and offload some of those clinical responsibilities from your attendings. Um, and then, you know, a secondary uh, goal is for you to learn how to become a clinician and they kind of meld together uh, like by you know I'm thinking about internal medicine for instance where where you really are you can't really tease out the learning and the work uh, with radiology residency you you're expected to come to work but uh, if you're not learning every minute of that day then you're doing something wrong and so it, even even when the day is over we're expected to be reading and and, and studying uh, much like in medical school, because the breadth of information that we have to cover, uh, we never, you know, you, you barely touch on in your medical training up until this point. So it's very important to, to recognize that in many ways uh, you're committing to four more years of, of deep learning. Um, and, and I think for some people that can be exciting, and then for others that can be, you know, a little off-putting, and they want to just be done and be, you know, I just want to work when I'm done with med school, you know, like that sort of attitude. But, um, but with radiology residency, we really are learning every day.